Good Friday morning. Yes, it is a feel-good Friday. Rangers fans are going to be down in the dumps, but the series is not over. This is a seven-game series. Things look terrible right now. Your team came out and got their asses kicked last night and shut out. But, but, I bring you back to last year. This is what I'm doing on a feel-good Friday. I'm pumping you up. I bring you back to last year. The Rangers were down 3-1 to the Penguins. You had a commitment somewhere. You were raising money or something in another state. And you called in that morning and you trashed the coach and you trashed the team. And you were so upset with that game four loss and thought that they were done. And they came back and they won that series. So here they are again on the precipice of being eliminated, getting their ass handed to them three straight games. It's a seven-game series, Boomer. That's all I can say on this feel-good Friday. You got two more opportunities, and Al is right. Saturday night's the first opportunity. It's the booming celebration. It's the biggest night for the Boomer Esiason Foundation. You know something special is going to happen that night for you. Igor Shosturkin's going to, like, score a goal past Schmid in overtime all the way from the other end of the ice. Or Jerry Recco is going to be waving his shirt around his head in his bolo tie in the middle of the dance floor, go, woo Good morning, Boomer. How are you? You know, I appreciate your attempt at trying to make this a feel-good Friday, and I don't want to bring everybody down. I don't. I don't, because we had the NFL draft to talk about, some interesting moves by some teams that uh, uh, that really did well, and then there's the sliding of some top-end players that are going to end up getting picked today in the second round of the draft. Uh, it was 300,000 people in Kansas City. It looked great on television. Mm. Uh, it was an amazing experience, and then watching Bryce Young go number one uh, to my buddy Frank Reich, uh, very interesting as well. So there's a lot to talk about there. I like the Giants pick at Deontay Banks, know him very well, University of Maryland player. He was a great player for us. He really, really was, and he is big, he is strong, and what he really is, he's fast, and uh, that's one of the reasons why you know they they really wanted him. He was like the fourth or fifth best cornerback in the draft, but uh, cornerback was one of the deeper uh, one of the deeper positions in this draft in the first round. So this young man, uh, hopefully he lives up to the hype, and hopefully he lives up to what he did as he was built, building his career at the University of Maryland. So I, I'm, I was happy, really happy to see the Giants do this because I know they needed another cornerback. They needed help there. So I was happy about that. The Jet pick is very interesting to me. Uh, they fell back in the way they were reacting in their draft room. Now they know cameras are in there. So they're not going to be hanging their heads yeah, yeah. down because they couldn't get a particular offensive lineman or whatever. But I know that when you see this kid McDonald on tape and you read about him, uh, that he was a very good player at, uh, at at Iowa State. And, you know, we don't see Iowa State. You know, that's where Brock Purdy came from. Yeah. You know, they have a lot of good the football Cyclones. players there. Yeah, they have a lot of good football players there. And, you know, this just adds more defensive line depth uh, to the Jets, which is great which is what you want, which is what Rob Sala wants. He wants to roll those guys in in waves, and this is just another guy to add to the mix. He's not going to be asked to start right out of the gate, so not a lot of pressure for him, but when he gets on the field, hopefully he'll be fresh and he'll be a monster out there and he'll be able to you know, create some havoc. To me, the, the two biggest winners in this draft, I felt like, were the Houston Texans. They got the foundational quarterback, they believe, in C.J. Stroud, and then they trade up to number three, and they get Will Anderson, the edge rusher from Alabama. Many, many thought he was the best player in this draft. So when you take those two players, those two particular positions, you're saying to yourself, the Houston Texans are, are building something the right way. And then, of course, the other team that I think did really well was the Philadelphia Eagles, unfortunately, for you New York Giant fans. They add two more guys to their defensive line. Uh, they had Jalen Carter, who did fall to them. They did trade up one spot to get him, the defensive tackle from Georgia. And then later on in the first round, uh, they trade in again, I believe, and uh, they get uh, Nolan Smith, uh, the outside linebacker, so or the inside linebacker, depending on where you want to play him. So they just got faster and better on defense. Now, assuming Jalen Carter's got all of his uh, off-the-field stuff together, uh, he is going to be a wrecking crew. He is a really, really good football player. So the Eagles did exactly what I thought they were going to do. They were going to defense. Yeah, you know, I, I got I got to say something. You know how many times, you know, I've walked in here 
and I've wanted to talk about football or baseball or basketball, and I didn't mention the hockey, and then you will talk for seven straight minutes about hockey. And then today, I'm thinking I really want to hear what Boomer has to say about hockey. I set you up. And you spent four and a half minutes talking about the NFL draft. You know, because I didn't want to ruin a feel good Friday. You want me to ruin a feel good Friday? I, I don't you want, want you me to ruin like I said. No, 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 like no, no, the, no. I said to Boomer and Geo Live, you want me involved? Do you yes. really want me involved? Yeah, of course. And you said, yes, I want you involved. I, I said, okay, to I'm going to be involved. And you saw what happened that night. There is. If a... I get involved right now and I let go and I just absolutely start, my head is going to explode. There okay. are you are the voice of many many frustrated Rangers fans this morning. They look to you for an explanation. They look to you to hammer these guys. They are waiting we have this morning. Four hours. I know, but this is the time you usually hijack the segment to talk about hockey. And now you're sloughing it off. I don't understand. I'm not sloughing anything. You sloughed it I'm right not off. Sloughing anything off. You said it's a feel good Friday. It is a feel good Friday. And you, and you tried to let me know that this is going to go seven games, which it I, is. which I predicted, by the way. Right, you did. Right, in the I beginning. predicted that this series was going to go seven games. And when you are in a seven game series, there are going to be ups and downs. The problem, from my perspective, from the Rangers, they are getting housed by the uh, by by the Devils. And three guys in particular, and their names are not Nico Heischer or Jack Hughes, although those guys are playing well. Don't get me wrong. But when you look at uh, uh, Eric Halla, you look at Timo Meyer, you look at Andre Palat, those guys are kicking the living crap out of the Rangers. And so I, the other the other thing, too, is like I like to make a point and I like to talk about it, but I can't because there's a fat moron <laughs> on the other side of the freaking glass who wants to keep doing that to me and interrupting me. So I'm not happy about it. You know what I'm saying? So those three experienced players are actually kicking the living crap out of the Rangers. And Timo Meyer, while not a lot of points, he's agitating. And he's getting in the minds of everybody. He's playing his ass off. That was a great pickup. When when they picked him up at the at the trade deadline, it says one of the best pickups at the trade deadline because he still has a lot mm-hmm. to give. He's right in the middle of his, uh, you know, of his prime. As opposed to, say, Patrick Kane. Again, one of the greatest American hockey player – who looks like he's skating in mud against the Devils? Like he is, I don't know what he's doing. He he, look, they're trying trying to move him around, trying to get him away from people. Guys are skating past him. Uh, it seems like every time he does have the puck, uh, not every time, but a lot of the time, he turns the puck over. Um, there's there's something wrong with him physically, and maybe the Rangers got sold a bill of goods that he was healthy and he's not healthy. That's what it looks like to me. He looks like he's slow. The hands are there, fine. The hockey IQ is there, fine, but this Devils team is way too fast, way too rough, um, way too physical, and they which is surprising because all- in the beginning the Rangers were the much more physical yeah. team, and it looked like there was a decided advantage that was not going to go away from the physicality standpoint in the first two games. And the Rangers are supposed to have the better goalie. Meanwhile, this rookie goalie uh, has stopped seventy eight out of eighty shots and, and posts a shutout last night. Yeah, and there's not a lot of room on the ice. They can't get the puck past them. Uh, they. I felt like they were working harder last night. I saw that at the beginning of the game, and Panarin was shooting more. But, man, they they have just overwhelmed the Rangers, overwhelmed the Rangers' defense. Odd man rushes left and right. Igor's got to make flying saves all over the place. They even tweeted it out last night. They left him out on a limb once again. And, you know, this is supposed to be a really solid decor for the Rangers. It's been nothing but an unmitigated disaster. They're losing board battles. Uh, You know, Igor's got to make... These unbelievable save. That game should have been seven to eight to nothing yeah. last night. Yeah. I mean, the Devils literally had 10 to 12 high quality chances on two on ones, on power plays. Our player, power play is getting completely dismantled by Lindy Ruff and his coaching staff. And Gerard Gallant is standing there, you know, making jokes. And, you know, it's not funny. They're going to come home and there's going to be an angry garden on Saturday night. And I'm glad I'm not going. Yeah. I'm glad I'm glad I'm going to be distracted because you know if they, if they show up and they play like they played tonight this whole thing about Tarasenko and Kane is a complete waste. It is a 100% complete waste. They went out Chris Drury went out and got those guys. We all lauded him for doing that and bringing back Tyler Mott and bringing in um, Nico Mikola. If if this doesn't work, 
you know, the coach is probably going to get fired. I mean, this is like this is where well, the you, coach is sitting right now. Well, you'd have to at this you point. You have to, got to get your head out of your ass. I mean, think, and you have got to get your team. You know, start playing the right way and stop playing so loose. I mean, I the first the first two games they play great, and maybe because the the Devils were a little bit inexperienced and they were a little bit nervous Game early three, on. They and, played well too. And Vanacek, yeah. Vanacek was not great in those first two games, so they change to Schmid. And that game three was the pivotal game for me. That was the game where somehow they had to get the winning goal in overtime, and they didn't get it. And the guys that were on the ice for that winning goal for the Rangers were all experienced players. And Jesper Brout makes a great pass to Dougie Hamilton, and he buries it. So I don't know what to tell you. I still think it, I'm, um, I said it was going seven, so I know – when you when a, when a series like this and you're wearing your Islanders jersey today for some reason, like, well, I'm going to go. I'm end up going to the game. That's why. So I wanted to represent and give that. Not it has nothing to oh, do. You with are the, going to the game. Yeah. So you told the family, screw it. I'm going to no, the game. No, no, no. They ended up uh, deciding not to come. It was not oh, even tell oh. the family go screw it. They decided uh, not to come. So that uh, ended up working out in my wow. favor. At least when it comes to the Islander game. So oh, I thought I thought you were just going to say you know what you got you know you were hungry for it. You wanted to be there. And- <laughs> I knew the family was coming in and it was going to be raining and everything. Meaning yeah. Everybody's going to be inside a lot. And I just figured, you know what? I saw that on you today. I guess you're going to the game. Yeah. And I guess you figured you told Gina I'm going to the game. No, well, she's actually going to come with me, which oh. is great. So oh, the first okay. time I actually asked her to go to one of these games, and she said, yeah, so this is not me trying to rub it in at all with the Rangers. Completely separate. I just wanted to represent for them because uh, they've been so kind and they invited me back again. So I'm just, that's what I was doing here. But anyway... Um, yeah, I. these things are up and down. These series are crazy. The Devils look completely overwhelmed and lost in the first two games. That third game was a great battle between two really good teams. And ever since then, you know, the Devils have just, as you put it, quite uh, perfectly overwhelmed the Rangers in every single aspect. And this goalie now is that story. And we joked about it after game three. The rookie goaltender that comes in out of nowhere. It feels like something that happens to the Rangers all the time. Uh, and it is playing out that way. But, but, I do, I mean, I know it's a different year. I know it's a different team. But the game, when the, the Rangers went down 3-1 to the Penguins last year, they looked horrible in that game. Horrible. It, what was it? The, did, it wasn't like 6-1 to one or something? Yeah, yeah we, we've been, we've been down horrible. this road before. And that's right. You, you, when you live in the moment, like I'm doing right now, yeah. and I'm reacting to what I watched and witnessed last night, by far their worst game. Uh, although Schmidt did have to make a couple of saves early on in this game again. You know, I, I don't know how many times the puck has fallen behind him and not gone in the net yeah. in the last three games. It's ridiculous. I've never seen anything like this because it happened again to him last night. But to give up a shorthanded goal, to get beat on most of the board battles, to get beat down the ice, uh, to to have passes you know, going from one side to the other with very little resistance in the defensive zone is a disgrace. It is an absolute disgrace, and uh, you know I, I don't. I, I I'd like to sit here and tell you that I knew what Adam Fox is doing, or Jacob Truba is doing, or Keandre Miller is doing half the time, and how many breakaways and odd man rushes. It's just it's so frustrating to watch because you can't give a team that has that much skill and that much speed, and they might just have the might the, the right mix going right now, and the goal is going to be. You know, always going to be the question mark because you just never know when it's all of a sudden going to start where he's given up goals. But yeah, I, don't know I, I didn't think you. the Rangers were they came out sleeping like the the last game. You know, what, what a game uh, f- uh, five, no four, game, yeah, four. game four. The game four, I felt like th- that they they did not look right. They looked slow. They looked like they were out of it. It didn't. You mentioned that the Devils wanted it more and early on in this game, even though the Devils scored forty seconds in, I didn't get that same. How about feeling. that goal? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, you know, that goal is like you win the face off, it goes back, back to Shesterkin, and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, it's back in the back of the net. I know. Well, that, that's how quick they of are. Adam Fox. Right. I mean, but that, I mean, that's how quick they are. That's how fast it happens uh, with the Devils. But, you know, and th- the skill on the Rangers side is just not matching that of the Devils right now either. I, you I know mean, what, you know what it is, honestly? I, I know that Panarin tried to get to middle of the ice last night. You know, so much of the Ranger, you know, skill players, and this is not who Kreider is. Kreider's a guy that goes that right down the middle of the ice, and he needs to do that. He needs to show up. Um, but it, it, it's it's along the boards. It's when it works, it's great. And 
But I got to give the Devils' defense a lot of credit. They're blocking a lot of shots. It, I, we're not playing the '90s Devils. I, that's for sure because there's no Niedermeyer, Danico, and Stevenson back there. <laughs> but those guys, Marino, um, you know, Dougie Hamilton, you know, they're playing great right now. I mean, they're clearing pucks, they're blocking pucks. Um, you know, Siegenthaler's getting involved. I, I, I mean, I they they that part of it, they are completely playing the out Ranger. They're outplaying the Rangers' defense. Completely. I mean, you know, you have an Norris Trophy winning uh, defenseman and Adam Fox making over $9 million. You have, uh, many people would say, a, a Hall of Famer and Artemi Panarin who's making over $11 million. And they're completely disappeared these three games. And Mika, too. Uh, another guy who you expected a hell of a lot more from right. who was basically, you know, on the back of a milk cart in this I, series. I, I will say this to them. You know, it's, it is it is about protecting your home ice. You've already lost two games there. And this, it's, it's different than the Penguins because it's the Devils. It's your it's your rival. It's mm. one of your key. And I know the Penguins are a rival for us too because of Sidney Crosby and everything. But this is the Devils, and you have the Islanders. These these are the two teams that are the smaller fan bases. They don't spend nearly as much money. They don't have all the resources. Maybe the Islanders now do, but for years they didn't have the resources that the Rangers have. The Rangers are the big team. Yeah, of course. You know, yeah. this is like uh, this is. Would you say Man U versus? I don't know who. We we need Gallo for that one, but right, we do. But but the point <laughs> Yankees, is Yankees Yankees Rays. You want to put yeah. it that way? Well, that, it it kind of is like Yankees Rays, and the Rays have been a thorn in the Yankee side. Yeah, and and so have the Devils. And the Devils, you know, they drafted well, but more importantly, not only did they draft well, that the, the signings of the Eric Hollis, Andre Palats, Dougie Hamiltons, and Timo Myers, a trade for Timo Myers. Those four guys with Marino, five guys, are guys that you know are all tried and true NFL hardcore players, and they're all playing well against the Rangers, and they're they're outplaying the hardcore players on the other side uh, for the Rangers. And those guys would be Barkley Goodrow got in a fight last night, um, you know, yelling at his teammates, trying to do what Truba did, you know, against the Chicago Blackhawks earlier in the year, but. Devils are fast, and they look much faster. They look much more confident, and their goalie's playing good, and uh, our defense is not playing good. All right, At least Boomer, last night it didn't. Boomer and Geo on the field. 